Hello everyone and welcome to this week's lightweight Java Game Library 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be texturing our quad. So let's get right to it and we're going to start off in the loader class where we're going to create a method that's going to load up a texture into OpenGL so that we can use it. And this method is going to take in the file name of the texture that we want to use and it's going to load it up into memory and return the ID of that texture so we can access the texture and use it whenever we want. So we're going to use the slick utils texture loader here and that's going to take in the type of texture that we want to load up and this is always going to be PNG all the all the textures that we're going to be using are going to be PNG images and it also needs to take in a file input stream and we have to give this the file path of our texture and it's always going to be in the res folder we're always going to store our textures into the res folder once we've created it and they're always going to be dot ping so import a couple of these and we're going to need to surround that in a try catch let's just uh, get rid of these so we've loaded up a texture now and what we need to do now is to get the ID of that texture and that's pretty simple just texture dot get texture ID and then all we're going to do now is to return that ID from the method now like we did with the VAOs and the VBOs at the end of the when we finish playing the game when we close it down we're going to need to delete all of the textures so we need to keep track of them when they're created so let's create a list of integers which will be all the texture IDs and I've called that textures and whenever we create a new texture we're going to store the ID of the texture into that list and then in the cleanup method when the game has closed we're going to loop through that list of textures and for each one we're going to delete the texture using gl delete textures and that will delete the texture from memory so now let's create a new package and this package is going to contain all the classes to do with textures so we'll just call this package textures and let's create a new class in this folder in this uh, package and we're going to call this class model texture and this is going to be the class that will represent a texture that we can use to texture our models so at the moment the model texture only needs the texture ID in the future we'll, uh, we'll add a few more things to this class but at the moment we're just going to be using a simple texture so all it needs is the ID of the texture and we're just going to add one get method here as well for that ID. Great, uh, now we're going to create yet another package. And this package is going to contain models. Uh, so let's, let's move our raw model class into there. Just click and drag it into models. Click OK and should now be in there and we're also going to create a new class which is going to represent a textured model because the raw model only represents model data and the model texture is just textured data but we want to have a class that contains both a model and a texture and this is what we're doing now with the textured model class this contains a raw model and the model texture that we want to texture that raw model with Again, just a, a simple class here, not much going in, going on in here at the moment. Constructor will take in a raw model and a model texture. And just set both of these. And then we're also just going to have two get methods, which we can generate just right click and then go to source generate getters and setters and select getters and click OK so that's the textured model class done 
So before we go any further, we need to actually have a texture that we can load up into our game. So go into your file explorer, go into your projects folder, and then we're going to create a new folder called res. And in here we're going to put all the textures that we are going to be using in our game. So I've got this simple image here called image. You can use whatever texture you want, but it does have to be a PNG file, and it also has to be square, where each side of the square is 2 to the n pixels long, where n is an integer value. So it can be any of these sizes. So once you've got your texture set up and into the res folder, we can go back into the code and let's go into the main game loop where we're going to load up that texture. So let's create a new model texture called texture and the constructor of this has to take in the ID of the texture which we can get by loading up the texture using that load texture method that we made earlier in the loader class. So put in the name of your texture file there and now we're going to create a textured model object and the constructor for this will take in the model, the raw model that we have from previous episodes and it also now takes in the texture that we just created and we just have to import that. Uh, now let's have a look in the renderer class because at the moment our render method is only rendering raw models and we want it to now be able to render textured models. So let's change it to take in a textured model uh, but it does still need access to the raw model in inside this method so let's get the raw model out of the textured model so that it can still use it for binding the vertex array and other things. And if we go back into the game loop, we need to put the textured model into that render method when we call it. And this all will still work, but it won't be using the texture. So just run that and it should all still look like last time, which is great, but we want it to use the texture. To texture an object, we have to tell OpenGL how it should map the texture onto the object. So first we have to know a bit about the texture coordinate system. Now, you know in the world we have graphs and charts, and the origin is pretty much always in the bottom left, which seems pretty logical. Well, this isn't how it works in OpenGL. For textures in OpenGL, 0, 0 is at the top left of the image, with 1, 0 being the top right corner, 0, 1 being the bottom left corner, and 1, 1 of course being bottom right. And texture coordinates are usually referred to not as XY coordinates, but as UV coordinates, or sometimes even ST. This is just so we don't get them confused with spatial positions. So let's have a look at our quads, and so far we've only given each vertex an XYZ position coordinate, but now we're also going to be giving each vertex a UV texture coordinate. This will be used to determine what point on the texture is mapped to each vertex. So as an example, let's map V0 to a UV coordinate of 0 0.25, 0 0.25 on the texture, and we'll map V1 to 0 0.75, 0 0.25, V2 to 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and finally we're going to map V3 to 0 0.25, 0 0.75. And now if you imagine the texture being stretched out over the quad so that each of these points in the texture was actually connected to its corresponding vertex, then the part of the texture covering the quad would look something like this. But what we want to do in this episode is to render the whole texture onto the quad. So to do that we just have to connect up the corners. So V0 will be mapped to 0, 0, V1 to 1, 0, V2 to 1, 1, and V3 to 0, 1. And using those texture coordinates, the whole texture will be rendered perfectly onto the surface of the quad. And we're going to be storing this texture coordinate at each vertex in the VAO that we created a couple of tutorials ago. So at the moment our VAO has one VBO for the positional data about each vertex, but now we're going to be adding another VBO to the VAO which will contain texture coordinate data. And in this VBO we'll put in the texture coordinate data for V0, V1, V2 and then V3. It has to be in the same order that we define the positions in. And so here's our VAO, and if you remember, we've already got the positions VBO stored in attribute 0 of the VAO. And now we're going to store the texture VBO in attribute 1 of the VAO.
So let's now go back into the code and we can put in the texture coordinates that we were just talking about. You might notice here that I've actually got V1 and V3 the other way around now, and that's because in the diagrams I'd uh, got V1 and V3 the wrong way around from how we usually have them. So let's go into the load to VAO method because we now want to also load up the texture coordinates into the VAO. So it would be great if we could use this store and attribute list method for the texture coordinates as well, but I was a bit silly last time and I hard coded this 3 into the code here. This is uh, when we load something up into one of the attributes, we have to tell it how big each coordinate is. And for the positions, this is a 3D coordinate, X, Y, Z, but for the textures, it needs to be just a 2D coordinate. So instead of hard coding that 3 in there, we're going to take it in as a parameter for that method. So let's now put the 3 in there for the positions because they're a 3D vector, X, Y, Z. And then we're going to store into attribute 1, we're going to store the 2D vector or 2D coordinates, which are texture coordinates. So we put in our texture coordinate data there. And we need to put in the texture coordinates when we call that method in the main game loop. So let's now go into the vertex shader where we can now access those texture coordinates from the VAO for each vertex. So we're going to have a new input now, which is a VEC2, a 2D coordinate, which is the texture coordinates. And let's just delete all this color stuff because we're not going to use that. We can't actually use the texture coordinates in the vertex shader, so we're going to pass them straight to the fragment shader. So let's create an output, which is also a VEC2, and it's just going to be, we're just going to call it pass texture chords, and we're just going to set that to the input text chords, so, so that the texture coordinates get linearly interpolated all over the quad, and then they can be used in the fragment shader. So let's get rid of that color input, and the fragment shader's input is now that vec2 called pass texture chords that got passed to it from the vertex shader. And the output is of course still the output color of the pixel that's currently being processed. But we now have a new variable, a new type of variable, it's a uniform, which I'll be explaining next week, don't worry about it too much right now. Uh, but this is a sampler 2D and we're going to call it texture sampler and this basically represents the texture that we're going to be using. And now we're going to use a special GLSL method called texture, and this takes in the texture that we want to sample, and it takes in the coordinates for the point on the texture that we want to sample. And what this method does is it returns the color of the pixel on the texture at those coordinates that we give it. So that method will sample the texture that we gave it in the sampler 2D, and it will sample it at those texture coordinates that we gave it in pass texture chords and it will get the color of the pixel that it finds at those texture coordinates and it will return it and what we're going to do with that color is we're just going to output it to the pixel that's currently being processed. So we're almost done now just a couple of things left to do firstly we need to link up this input variable the texture chords input to the vertex shader we need to connect it to attribute one of the VAO and we do that in the static shader class using the bind attribute method and we're going to bind attribute 1 to the variable called texture chords in the vertex shader. So that will give the vertex shader access to the texture coordinates in the VAO. And now that we're using the attribute array 1 in the VAO, we need to enable it before rendering in the render method. And we of course have to then disable it, um, uh, disable it after we've finished rendering. So disable vertex attribute array 1 and everything is now done except we haven't yet told OpenGL which texture we want to render onto our quad. So the way we do this is we have to put it into one of the texture banks that OpenGL provides us with. So we have to activate one of them. Uh, we're going to activate just the first texture bank, texture 0, because this is where the sampler 2D, remember the sampler 2D uniform in the fragment shader, that's by default using the texture in texture bank 0. And then we just have to, to bind our texture to it. So bind texture, this takes in type of texture, which is a 2D texture, and then it takes in the texture ID that we want to bind, which we can find in the texture model. 
uh, that's texture model dot get texture dot get texture ID. And there we go. Let's go ahead and run that, and hopefully, fingers crossed, that will work. There we go. So we've got the texture rendered nicely onto our quad. So that is it for this week. Next time we're going to be moving and rotating models using matrices, and that video will be up next Saturday. You can check out my latest devlog video if you're interested, the link's on the screen at the moment, and links to my Twitter, IndieDB page, and my new Facebook page are in the description below. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have an awesome week, and I will see you all next time. And we can get that from our texture in the textured model. And that's it, we can go ahead and run that, and that will all now crash horrifically. Oh, dear. Uh, huh.